Hi, good evening. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. Thank you for joining me as I take on this really complex but fascinating area. Could nicotine help with regards to the COVID storm? Now, if you haven't been following what I've been talking about recently, the COVID storm is an anticipation of what is going to happen next in terms of the pandemic. We're going ahead of the science. So you wouldn't have heard this anywhere before. And I've been speaking about this quite regularly. And with regards to this COVID storm, spike triggered autoimmune response mechanism. This is essentially what I think is happening at the moment and is likely to be causing problems in the near future when we think about continued circulation of the virus. So you're not going to have heard this before. So this spike triggered autoimmune response mechanism, I've just done a presentation a few weeks ago looking at the pathology around what it is that I'm looking at. Now, people may think that this is just a one-off idea. No, no, no. I have been observing this. I've been studying this since 2021. So I've been seeing this clinically for a long time. It's just that it's difficult to pick up, it's difficult to understand, and critically, it's difficult to investigate. But I'm seeing it more and more often now. So I can sense the transition with regards to the presentation of disease. That's what I am after. And so you have to remember that what I'm giving you here is a taste of what we are covering in the next webinar in a few days or if you don't see if you've missed it there'll be a link to the course navigating the covid storm therapeutic options click on the link below to join us in terms of this important discussion what you have to realize is that when i did the first presentation a few weeks ago it was very well attended lots of people had questions they wanted to understand what was going on but there was a consistent question what do we do because as i said if you say this to anybody in the scientific community unless they've been watching my videos they don't know about this because i'm literally building a white paper or a short paper like a short communication paper and a white paper to alert the scientific community that this is important. So this question about nicotine. Now, I'm not supporting smoking. I am just looking at the science. And there's a reason why we don't necessarily support smoking when we talk about nicotine, because nicotine can be delivered in a number of different ways that are safe and not necessarily associated with smoking, which I'll talk about quickly. But how this came about is as I prepared the presentation and I was looking at different things that I thought were relevant. Say for instance, in the upcoming webinar, we're gonna also talk about the importance of omega-3s, really, really important. It probably is gonna be the foundation, but again, it's about the quality and the, the relevance that it has in terms of managing the symptoms. But when I was doing the research, something floated across me. I think it was a video that somebody sent and it was by a Dr. Bran Ardis. Now, he's a guy who I have heard about, I've seen pieces of his presentations, he has been talking about snake venom in relation to COVID. And from a scientific point of view, what I realized when somebody asked me about it, what I said is that I think that what he's making reference to is conotoxins that were found in stool serum and urine of people who had been infected with COVID. And as I said, this is coming from bacteria, it seems. Bacteria in the gut are making these conotoxins. And so the argument is, is that was it built into the, um, the spike? I, I, that's more conspiratorial. I can't necessarily speak about that. All we know is that there are unusual toxins that could be along the same line as to certain snail venom or snake venom toxins that can have specific effects on the body. And so part of his focus has been on nicotine. And he has been talking about this for quite a while. So I've heard about it, but 
the way I approach science is I wait to see if there is a, a moment of inspiration that comes. And so coincidentally, somebody sent me this video, short snippet of it. And as I was listening to him, because I do listen, even though it, it appears that I don't always listen, I, I listen to everything because when you're looking for answers, nothing should be off the table. So it doesn't matter what it is. My approach is to listen and see whether or not I can find a scientific and logical explanation for what it is that they're speaking about. And when I heard it for the first time, I thought, you know, I think this is very important. There is a piece of the puzzle here that really could be relevant. So I'm going to take you back with a few slides that will be part of the presentation. As I said, make sure you join us um, with regards to the presentation. Um, the link is in the description below. You can um, come on the um, presentation just in a couple of days. But fundamentally, the COVID storm, the spike triggered autoimmune response mechanism that I'm describing, that's a term that I've, I've put together, this acronym, is essentially about macrophages. And it's activated macrophages. It's not macrophage activation syndrome, but it is subclinical macrophage activation. And my explanation, which I'll cover more in the paper, is that there are a number of cells that normally control these macrophages, the natural killer cell and the B regulatory cells that are damaged or dysfunctional after infection. And so what you then have is that macrophages can become activated both by the virus and the immune system and then drive disease presentation. And that's essentially what I have been looking at with regards to the COVID storm. I think it's a very, very important point. So as I was researching that, my question is, even if you have a deficiency or a problem with your natural killer cells or your regulatory cells, is there any way to control the macrophages? What else can we use? And that's fundamentally what I'm looking for when I talk about therapeutics. And you just have to understand how the body works. And again, this is a teaser. I want you to come to the presentation in a few days or to do the course that's associated with it. But here is the important piece of information. There are nicotinic cholinergic receptors that are part of the parasympathetic and the sympathetic system. And the primary uh, neurotransmitter that stimulates these receptors is acetylcholine. Now, what they found, the reason why they call them nicotinic cholinergic receptors as opposed to muscarinic cholinergic receptors is that they found that nicotine does a similar job of stimulating it like acetylcholine. So both of them can stimulate this receptor, which then has an effect on the brain, the peripheral nervous system, and other parts of the body. So this is where nicotine comes in. And this is part of the reason why nicotine has addictive properties. And this is why nicotine is still a drug. It does change your body's physiology. And so it's, again, always something that you must be careful of. But when I listened to him, there was something that he said. Uh, this was when Dr. Brian Ardis said something that jumped out at me. And he mentioned that there was a study in Wisconsin about the use of nicotine in COVID and it made a difference. As I tell you, my rule is, is that I don't care what works. I just want to understand why it works and how it works. And this is why, therefore, even early on, when I didn't fully understand when people were talking about uh, ivermectin, I, I waited, I, I listened, and I looked at the science and I tried to understand if this is working, why would it work? It was the same principle when they talk, spoke about hydroxychloroquine. If it's working, why? What are the mechanisms? And when you do that, you can then see the answers. So it's the same principle here. It's just science asking the questions. So here is what I found in the paper. And again, I will be covering this in a bit more detail in the presentation. Look at this. I've copied this out of this paper that was from 2023, looking at a cohort of people in Wisconsin. 
um, smoking status, nicotine medication, vaccination, and COVID-19 hospital account, um, outcomes. Of 2,124 current smokers prescribed nicotine replacement therapy, NRT, 95 died, just 4.5%. Compared to 434 in the non smoking category or the previously smoking category, 7.7% um, of the um, 5,640 current smokers without a documented nicotine replacement therapy prescription. So, nicotine replacement therapy was associated with reduced adjusted odds of mortality. Now, 4.5 to 7 is not huge, but it is definitely not insignificant. So when I see those kinds of numbers, my question is why? Why would that be the case? What is the mechanism? And so when I then thought about it, I then go back to the research. And then I look at nicotine and think, based on how I understand the COVID-19 occurring with regards to the delayed interferon, the accumulation of macrophages, the cytokine storm, why would a nicotine replacement therapy make a difference in the context of severe COVID-19? That's what I'm going to answer in the presentation. So you need to come to it. And remember, as I said, I am not just making reference to cigarettes. Cigarettes are only one source of nicotine. And the problem with cigarettes, you're technically burning um, the tobacco. So you're inhaling all the smoke and all the other things along with it. And so therefore, there are toxins associated with smoking. That's why we don't encourage it. Even the nicotine inhal in inhalators may have some risk depending on what um, formulation they use but the nicotine patch is pretty safe to use and we use it all the time in hospital settings just to help patients get off cigarette smoking so there th this is this is not necessarily anything that is not used regularly and so therefore i need to be clear i'm not encouraging anybody to smoke but nicotine could still be very relevant so that's the principle as to what we're going to be talking about. I will be looking at the science around why I think that nicotine had that kind of effect in terms of COVID mortality. And why this is relevant is that everything I am looking at now is how do we mitigate the COVID storm? And remember when I said COVID storm, just repeating it, it means spike triggered autoimmune response mechanism. Based on my research, this is primarily being driven by macrophages. These are a specific immune cell, but they are not being well controlled. And therefore it is putting the whole immune system off and putting everything at risk. That's the foundation of the research that I'm looking at. And so everything is about, okay, this is ahead of the science, so you can't go to your doctor and ask for immune suppression because that's how we normally manage it. And we don't have enough research to support it, and so therefore it can't be done. So it raises the question, well, what do people do? Even if they believed me, and even if they thought the science made sense, what can they do? Well, if you are interested, remember, join us on the webinar. That's what we're going to be talking about. How can you navigate the COVID storm? What therapeutic options are available to you that you can use that don't necessarily need to be prescribed? That's fundamentally what I'm trying to find the answer for because that's the question people keep asking me. What do I do? How can I take this knowledge and apply it in a logical way? So my aim is to take you through the science, say, here are the tools or the toolbox that may be available to you. These are the pieces that you can try and are within your control and based on what you're on, because you have to think about if you're already on other medication, you will have to do the research to see whether or not there are interactions. But the point being is that there are relatively simple solutions that can be used to help to mitigate 
against this COVID storm. Remember, join us on the webinar, learn more about the science, and we can discuss some more what, whether or not you agree with me, I'm happy to be challenged on it. And we can then take the steps to making a difference and protecting everyone around us through knowledge and understanding. Have a great evening.